So why exactly is our bowl sitting in the middle of our yard? Notice, swing set, bowl, fencing. Oh my goodness, we have had a heck of a time, actually. <laughs> oh, this month has been a long month. My mouth, I just got some surgery done. Um, I had some teeth removed, so I'm quite sore. But I thought what I would do is just kinda, I don't know, share my life and what's going on. So if you have not been here before, I am Mama Bear Demay. I am mom to 14 children. 12 of my children are still here at home. And I have an awesome daughter-in-law too, so super excited about that. Um, she, they've been married since 2020, so three years. And so we are in Maine in October. This is the end of October. I think it's the 28th today, maybe? I don't know, the end of October. Um, I had surgery, it is Saturday. I had surgery on Monday, but it kind of went kind of funky. And so everything is good. I've just been in a lot more pain than I should have been. Um, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> this might be have some like stuttering moments or I might not talk appropriately or whatever. And that is why. So our bull keeps getting out. He is getting out like multiple times a day. Multiple. Yeah. Craziness. Yeah, he is getting out multiple times a day and making a havoc. We have like these massive pens out back, electric fence. He's just like going through it. It's just ridiculous. Today is opening season for deer and my freezer is my first priority right now. I mean, I need to work on fencing and I need to work on all these other things. The bowl was supposed to be going in the freezer anyhow. And, um, but our weather has just been so funky monkey. Marble, yeah. It has been so weird, so we have not yet. So I think what we're gonna end up doing is doing that tomorrow. Because you keep getting out. We're gonna be doing that tomorrow. Um, and then, but I need a freezer space. And I'm sorry if that's offensive to some people, but we like to eat what we grow and grow what we eat so we know it's in our food. Um, and this time of year, we are putting lots of animals um, in the freezer to provide our family food and that's just how things are right um, so he's gonna go first we were gonna put the sheep in there first um, because we usually like to hang um, a bull or something like that for 10 days and we will not have 10 consecutive good days to be able to do that but we are going to just um, hang them a shorter period and then put them in the freezer. My mouth is killing me. Sorry, guys. So I will show you what we're doing inside of the house because my freezers are kind of full. So I need to try to figure out what the heck I'm doing. And they're full with like the oddest things. Like it's not just one freezer of this and one freezer of that. So what we're doing, sorry, getting dark. Hopefully it'll be clear again in a minute. There we go. Okay, so what we're trying to do is one freezer is going to try to just be meat. That will be this. This is mostly meat here. And then here are some blueberries here from this season. So that's what we have left of blueberries and then meat here. And then can you um, do it so I can look in there? And so basically this has a couple roasts on top, but this is mainly chicken. And quite honestly, a lot of this chicken is actually just the carcasses. Um, if you haven't seen our video where we talk about butchering all of our chickens, we butchered a bunch of chickens and I put the carcasses in the freezer. And then once it, start <clears throat> once it starts to get cold, then I take my big pot and make chicken broth. And it has not been very cold to have the wood stove on, so I haven't wanted to... Um, I haven't wanted to spend the, um, propane in order to, like, have it boiling for three days. I'd rather put it on a wood stove. So I have a bunch of carcasses in there to make broth, which are really worth it, but it's just, like, a lot of carcasses and not food food, but 
bone broth is really nourishing. So I'm going to, it's supposed to get cold tonight. So I'm gonna start a broth today and I'm gonna like roll that through. So I think I'll just like show you to bits of like what we're doing over the next couple days, maybe even a week. I don't know, I'm gonna try to figure it out. All right, so over here, I have, um, these are all meals. So those are some taco mixed meat. That is not the new, um, we just found that at the bottom of the other freezer. That is not the new taco meat that we made that was keto for my daughter. And then I have some vegetables. So like this, if it was to cut like this, this portion mainly is meals. And I also have a big box of those hamburger patties. And then the, um, the side over here is those is vegetables so I have rice cauliflower I have some broccoli and I have some mixed veggies down there and then I just threw those on top that I just got at the grocery store so that's what's in there and then we're trying to get what is in here cleaned out and consolidated so that we can make room to put the bowl in so the bowl will probably be let me show you this freezer he'll probably go from here one way all the way to the top um and then that's if we don't do ribs and then if i have bones that i'm gonna keep there would be some on the bottom of like that half which would probably be whatever so we are just trying to i could can it but honestly i don't i don't want to because i don't have any meat and that is going to be like all the beef that we grow this year um yeah so let's get to it okay so i am outside obviously um and doing lunch and stuff in the house i came outside they have the two halves here this cow is a pretty big cow um so they are finishing doing what they are doing there um and then what they will do is um take this and we'll bring it into the garage so as you can see, we kind of built this game pool here. It is just a friend helped us do this. We just have two, I think they're actually eight by eight and not six by six, um, if you're curious and want to build one. This is like an eight by eight on either side. And then um, this is like a two by six going across to brace it. And then on the bottom, we have two by fours going this way and that is cemented in the ground. And then we have um, this right here you can buy off Amazon. And then this I bought off Amazon as well. The total for both of those I think was about $150. Okay, so this might be a little graphic for some people I guess. Um, this is the heart and then this is the liver. And so we're gonna dehydrate the liver this time. So we're gonna slice this up and put it in the dehydrator. And then um, the heart we will cut up and um, we will actually make um, like steaks almost with, just like slice it up and then do steaks with the, what am I trying to say people? What am I trying to say? I have no clue. We're trying to make steaks um, with the heart and then you put like onions and peppers and that type of stuff in there um so so this is what we do in the garage we hang from these beams up there i don't know if you can see that oh. from the beams up there and hanging down like this and then behind there's the other half there so these are the two rears and then the other parts the um two fronts over there so I thought that maybe doing like a day in a life or something like that would be um, of interest to you guys because you liked that before when we did a day in life when we were doing some outside stuff. I can't really speak very loud because my teeth are still bugging me a bit. Um, but the problem is, is this week we ended up doing a cow as well. So I'm not quite sure. I think what I'm going to need to do is make it into two separate videos. So. I'll give you bits and pieces of this, but I'll also put those bits and pieces into um, a butcher cow video. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing, guys. You know, 
this YouTube thing. I'm just trying to take you along with my life. Um, so you can see, like, we live extremely differently from a lot of people. And so I'm trying to just share with you how we live differently. But at the same time, it's hard because it's like, I could just wear, like, a, a camera on my shoulder. And actually, the, um, the program that I use, I can't do voiceovers really well on unless I'm doing, like, a short video on my camera. I mean, on my phone, then I can't do a short video. I can't do a voiceover really well. I'm using ClipChamp, and for some reason, every time I do a voiceover, it freezes, and then it, like, destroys all my material. I do not make a lot off of YouTube at all. Um, but I am very thankful. I'm thankful that the Lord had me start this a year ago because it's helping um, fund some... The little bit that we get is helping supplement some of the um, supplies this month um, for this is the second month that I've gotten any money um, and it's helping do some of my daughter who just was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes our insurance doesn't cover everything um, we're working out working on like a dual insurance type program um, but until then there are supplies that aren't covered and so that's really helpful. Um, I'm going to get into detail a little bit more about some of the other things that are going on with her. Um, but this is really helping a lot. I am just not like a film creator and I don't know how to like do that. I just know how to live my life, right? Like I know like what I'm doing and I feel like some of the information could be beneficial, but I don't pay anyone to do extra things for me. Um, so this is what you got. It may be choppy. It may be whatever, but it's my life. Okay. So right now what I'm doing and quite honestly, I don't know what video this is going to be on, if it's going to be on the beef video or if it's going to be in the day in life video. So I'm taking some bags and I am going to take, I have a bunch of meat so far, not a bunch. It's not really a bunch in comparison to what we have to do today. Um, but I'm going to make it into steaks. We have a couple roasts left and I find that we use steaks a lot more. So cuts that may have traditionally been more roasty, we're making into steaks because they can be steaks. It's just that it's whatever your family uses most. So we use a lot of burger and we use a lot of steaks more in the sense of like frying up a steak and, um, maybe like a stir fry or like that type of stuff, right? Um, so I want to do more steaks than roasts. That's what my kids tend to want to eat more of. And let's be honest, grass-fed steaks are so expensive. So expensive. Okay, so I'm going to move you guys over here, I think. And then, um, excuse the rest of the best in the house, because that's like, and you know, this is my focus right here. All right, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing. There we go. All right, so... Nothing fancy here. I got some baggies. I am going to, I think in one of my pockets. Yes, look at all that. Um, so I got some things. I'm just gonna start out writing some bags that say steak. To me and our family, it doesn't really matter where the steak comes from. We're gonna use it like in the same way. So I can tell like a tenderloin just from looking at the bag. All I'm going to do is write steak. And I don't even know if it's called the tenderloin to be honest. I, that's the term for the pig, but I don't know. We shall see. So I'm just going to write steak on some of these bags. I don't know. I got more steak coming from them over there. I just put those chickens in the oven for supper. So I am going to cut this and then I'm going to figure out what else I need to do and then maybe come back to the rest of the pile that will be in the kitchen by the time I'm done with this. So I'm going to cut these. I think I'm actually going to leave this fat on if I'm able to cut through it because that will, um, we think that's really important too. So I don't have my good knife anywhere. We shall see. We shall see. So usually we um, cure our beef for 10 days, but we don't have 10 days of cold weather. So that would be, let me just show you guys. This would be one of the steaks. This is our grass-fed bull. 
Um, and I am going to weigh this out, but I'm just going to put it off to the side on the clean table for now. And it might help me because it's not partially frozen to do it like this. Just to get through that fat there. I might need to get a different knife. Um, I have a knife that I usually use for butchering, and all those knives are being used right now, obviously, to butcher the cow. But I think I might see what I have for a different knife, because this one does not like me. Okay, so this here, I did end up getting a different knife. Um, this here is about what we would eat in a meal, so I'll bag that up and weigh them out, and then I'll write the weights on the bag. I do that because if we're going to have people over, then I want to know about how much I need to take out for um, other people as well. So I still have this and this, and I'll show you what the other kids are working on. So they're trying to get their cut out. They're trying to get some roast off in there. It's like an aerobic exercise. Can you help mommy? And then we have a bowl of fat. And this is going to go to the grinder for hamburger. And they were taking all that off of the original. This is where my daughter was standing before and she took the tenderloin out of there. And now there's the ribs. Um, we're not going to save those beef ribs. We're cutting that all up for okay, so hamburger. This, what I just cut up was two pounds and six ounces and I will bag that up and actually that is a really good size because if we're doing stir fry then this would be good for a stir fry and then if we go to um, have a meal with just steak then I would take two bags out instead of one and then we'd have roughly four to five pounds so they cut this big roast off of that beast um, and they asked is this just one big roast and I think I'm going to cut it up into a couple of different things so we'll do that after we're done cutting steak. What are you doing? Yeah, you're helping mommy weigh it out. Good job. You are doing it. What is that loud noise? Let's see. This is where we're at so far. Got a couple of roasts done up doing steak. What are you doing? Grinding and making hamburger. Now we have. She's cutting the rest. She's cutting the rest of that off in order to have burger. There's a burger pile. They're cutting the rest of theirs off to make burger as well. If you stick around, we're going to be making beef broth um, as we start clearing up some space because there's no space at this moment. Um, so let's see what we have left. So they are cutting here. This is the, um, that's gonna be hamburger. All of this here is gonna be hamburger. This is all the fat which spilled over onto the counter. Not really spilled, but we started throwing it on the counter. Um, we will probably do all that fat tomorrow in um, Instapot, not Instapot, ro in the roaster. Um, but not at the moment. I think we have two roasters. I can't remember if we still have two or not. Yeah. Um, and then there's this right here. This one right here is going to need to have just a little bit of this, um, meat taken off. And then what we do is we like to make our broth out of a joint. So we'll cut here and here and have that joint. And then we'll disjoint up here. In this section, we'll take that joint out, and then we would have this section here is one joint, and then this is another joint there. I'll show you. So this here in the pot is actually that middle joint there, and that's the first piece that we're going to do. And then in the smaller pots, we'll do um, whatever. So as soon as the beef broth, the beef is chunked up, it gets put in a bowl, and then the bowl goes next to this and then somebody who's middle-aged usually does that um not middle-aged as in 40 because that would be me um somebody who was maybe my seven-year-old my nine-year-old so they do a lot of this and then my um 
a little bit older, like preteen type ages, would be cutting off of the bone. And then they're putting the um, burger back here. We have the bags here. So it grinds into a bag and then they stick the bag in here and it ties off the top like that. And then each of those are one pound bags. I like them in one pound bags, even though we're a small fam, uh, we're, we're a small family. No, we're not, we're not a small family. Even though we're not a small family, I like them in the one pound bags because then I can put them in whatever increments I want. I could have four pounds or I could have five pounds. Whereas if I had them in two pound bags, I'd have to do four or six. And this is where we're at so far for beef. What I am doing is, um, they're bringing me big hunks of meat like this here or these here um and so my husband has been cutting some of the steaks here i've also been cutting steaks on here just depending on whatever a big piece like this i'm going to be cutting into roast i'm doing roast between four and five pounds and then the roasts are all along the bottom here so we have I think they said if we have one more quarter left to do. It is almost one. I have an appointment with Sweet Pea at 2.30, 2.15, but it's right up the road. I'm trying to look at the calendar as I'm speaking to you. 2.30 it looks like. So I'll need to leave here by two, so I'm hoping to get a bunch done before we go, and I'll be back right before then. So this is my stained cutting board. Um, I usually use these ones um, for the meat when we're doing stuff like this because then I can just like bleach them down and it doesn't and it works out fine. I don't like to bleach my wood. So this is a big hunk, right? So I'm just gonna figure out I'm putting this on the scale. I don't know if you can see the scale or not. Let me move this over. I'll put the scale here and this I'm gonna see how much this is roughly. I am guessing it to be about seven or eight pounds, maybe up to ten. Don't tell anyone, so that's ten. Um, I'm not supposed to lift over five. We won't talk about that. So, what am I going to do? If this is a ten pound roast, I'm going to look at it and see how I want to cut this. And I think I'm going to cut this piece off here as a smaller roast and then cut this in half here. So let's just do that real quick. So you can see the seam is kind of right here. I can take some of this fat to actually use. We do a lot of um, seam cutting, but not all seam cutting. We just kind of do what, you don't need to be a butcher to butcher your own animals. You need to make cuts that your family will eat. And that is the way that we do things. So I'm just coming this is, a lot of times seams are a great place to kind of eyeball to see what you want. Okay. But you also have to take into account like how big your family is, how big a roast you want, and that type of stuff as well. All right, so it's gonna go in the fat area. I'm just gonna take this real quick and make this into a roast on its own. There we go. There's a good roast. So I will do that one and then I'll weigh those three and you can see how I did it. And then I'm just gonna literally like take this and just cut it in half. Obviously I'm not a professional butcher. I'm just making cuts that are gonna work for my household. So I have these three cuts out of that big hunk of meat. I'm gonna move my cutting board over for a minute and I'll put the um, put that scale right here. So this one is going to be 3.05. I have a paper and I rewrite this after. I mean, obviously it has like meat and everything all over it, but I just chicken scratch it in here. 3.04. 
actually it should be 3.05 because that was 0.9 and then this is going to be 5.2 actually 5.3 And then this one is going to be less, 312. All right, so that's 312. Okay, so I got my three roasts there. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. And then I'm just going to take this. I'm sure you guys, especially if you're a big family, have gone to Sam's Club and gotten those big rolls. This is it. It just decided to come out of its packaging for me. So yay on that. Um, it usually happens, but it still is a lot cheaper and a lot more convenient. The weight of it kind of pulls it down. Um, so I'm just going to wrap this like this. I tend to just use my body and whatever. Wrap it a couple of times that way. Fold it. And then a couple of times the other way. Hopefully not knock over the camera. There we go. So then I'll put them opposite this way. So whatever works for you is what you do when you are doing this. You don't have to worry about what the cuts look like at the grocery store. You want to waste as little animal as possible. Yes, that is good. Ask daddy if you want your um, turkey. Uh, my daughter just brought me her plate so I could see how much she actually um, ate of her plate. So that's what I was saying to her. All right, let's see. Maybe I can put this a little bit back. I'm trying to show you how I'm doing it because this was one thing that I struggled with in the beginning. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need freezer paper and all that type of stuff. You can if you want to. You can have a Ziploc or really, food saver and all that type of stuff. You can have all those things, but you don't necessarily need those things. They can be a blessing to your family, but they're not a necessity, especially if you're on a tight budget. We taught ourselves, obviously, because we have no clue what we're doing and it doesn't look super fancy. So now I have one, two, three, and I wrote those rows down. So these are going to be one, two, three, and one, two, three. So now I'm just going to take my cheap masking tape. You can also use um, painter's tape. And mine's acting a little funny because it probably got warm or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, normally I'd write on it and then put it on it, but it's been acting really weird and I want it on there. Oops, see, told ya. I can probably write that on that little piece. And now I gotta pick that tape off. I'll do that not on camera. Nobody needs to see me pick tape for half an hour. I know y'all could fail me on that one. All right, let's see. So this is gonna be the 312. So I'm gonna write roast 3.12. And this is a job my kids are um, eating right now. And then I'm gonna write 5.03 and then roast. This is a job that people, kids who are newly um, learning how to read and write. They can write, they can practice their writing right on a bag. It doesn't need to be, I think sometimes we like separate school and work and everything else, but there's so many things to be learned. I have a lot of my younger kids weighing things out with me and then I'll have them like add, and then older kids might add weights and all that type of stuff. Um, you can see on some of my bags, I'll show you one. See this? So, she did a great job on that. Alright, I'm going to peel this and put this here, and then I'm going to cut some more meat up. Okay, so my battery went dead, so I was talking to nothing. What I did was I took a butternut squash that we had from the garden. It was just a small one and I threw that in here. I threw a bag of frozen greens that we had. We just freeze them like this. This was beet greens. Um, just threw all of that in there as well as the onion, the carrots, and then I did um, four like tablespoon type sizes, just scoops of salt and that will help draw um, everything out of like the marrow and everything so it'll be nice, delicious um, broth. 
So what I'm going to do is fill this to like two inches from the top or my daughter's gonna do that. Um, and then we're gonna put it on the wood stove and it will boil down today. Today is Monday and we will can that on Wednesday probably. Um, yeah, so let's see what else we have done. Okay, I don't know how you can see or can't see over here. The kids are watching something on TV so if you see or movie or whatever. Um, this is one big broth and we have the onions and um, greens and that type of thin carrots in here. I showed you that and then we did two additional ones with smaller joints just one joint in it not two we'll continue to um, fill this up over the next couple days using this and just keep this going to get it all out okay guys so it is time for me to be leaving in about 10 minutes um, with my daughter so I thought that I had um, only a quarter left to do so this right here is only half of the cow that we are doing so so far we have these but what I'm gonna need to do is bring um, all of these out into the freezer so let's just count up where we're at right now let's count the roast one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven roasts and then each row of these is five so five ten fifteen twenty twenty five thirty 35, 36, 37, 38. Okay, now I'll show you the hamburger. So we have the two front shoulders left. I thought we only had one front shoulder shoulder left. Um, this is the other front shoulder here, and I'll show you where the hamburger is after I tell them what's going on here. Oh, that's why. So this is what is left hanging. We have one of those in the house. Most of this is probably going to be up into burger. I wanted to make sure that I hopefully thankfully was there for the um the rear end portion so if you remember we cleaned out our freezers the other day and this is where we're at i do not know as far as space goes what we're looking at so we started to um stack the what is that hamburger we started to stack the burger here we have 29 burgers here um, obviously, see, she's put, they put, oops, sorry, they put paper down here to try to catch some of the dripping and that type of stuff. So, um, we're putting paper in between so they do not, um, stick together as well. Because we all, or I don't know if we all have done this. Let me move out of the dark. Um, there's plenty of times that we have actually, like, just put meat in the freezer without paper in between it or without anything in between it. And if it's all frozen together, then you're forced to take out, like, five or six, like, hunks of meat. And that's not what I wanted to do. See my cell phone? This is how I carry my cell phone. Yeah, real creative, huh? I don't know why they don't make more skirts with pockets. Um, I didn't realize I still had it on my shoulder till I was here. Okay, so... We have that there, and then the other thing that we have is just the heart. My son had cut that up last night, and that was enough for one meal. It was kind of really fatty on the other side. I thought we were gonna get a couple meals, but we ended up just getting one meal of that, so we'll have that there. Alrighty, we're out here. Um, so you can see these are all the roasts that we did earlier, and then here is the steaks that we did. And then we start at the bottom here with hamburger and then here with hamburger. And we have about that much space left. And then this much space here. I don't know if we'll have enough space for all the hamburger. We will see. If we do not, then I do have a little bit of room in the other freezer. Which is right here. So I figured if I was going to be picking this up off the counter, then I might as well just chop it up and put it into the roaster. So um, this right here on the counter is actually separate for a reason. Because this is like the crumbly fat here. So like this fat right here is perfect. Like for I like to use this for like cooking or whatever. Where this fat right here could be used for many different things. Um, one of our soap recipes actually calls for tallow. Um, and you can also, people make tallow candles and those types of things. So we may experiment with tallow candles. We've made beeswax and soy candles before. So we'll just see how that all goes out this year. But we'll be sure to take you guys along. So I'm going to just finish cutting the rest of this up. 
so they broke out the KitchenAid. This is the KitchenAid with the grinder attached to it and she is doing that and has a bowl over there to be working on. And then there's this pile here of meat still to be done. He is working on this right here is um, the meat. And then, so the only thing that we have left is doing the hamburger and the lard so i took the sweet lard is in here and we are doing this down as you can see i am going to stir this up and then i'm probably going to start another roaster or at least cut up the rest of the lard this afternoon i am going to work on that first i'm going to give you guys a quick um, i'm going to do a quick video of i stopped at the um, thrift store like i just said and i'm just going to give you a quick haul video there and then I will be back with what I'm doing. Okay guys, let's look at this tallow here and see where we're going here. I'm gonna take this lid off. Looking good, looking good. So what I'm gonna do is take this and strain off what there is and then I'll let it cook down a little bit more. Let's start down here. So, it really depends on the animal, how much fat is left up in this and how it looks. So these actually, this one actually has quite a bit of chunks. I have my strainer in here and I just, this is how I do it, this is how I rig it up. I do the same for the pig fat as well and we'll be doing our first pig, I think, um, Sunday afternoon after church. We'll hang it and then Monday be butchering that. Okay. How beautiful that is. So you can use tallow for so many things. It's becoming more popular actually in the health community as far as like moisturizing qualities and that type of stuff. Um, you can use it for candles. You can use it for soap. I plan on doing a little of both depending on how much I get. You can use it for cooking. This right here is the one that I'd probably use for cooking. So what I'm going to do with this, I took all this stuff off. That I really can for this. So I might just use this for my other that. Maybe I can grab some more. Let's see. Dumped it over. I wasn't paying attention. Let's go here. Okay. Another one. Can you see this? Oh, you can't even see them. So this is the tallow. I'm using old peanut butter jars. And I'm just going to... I do not can my tallow. I do not can my tallow. I just... Um, put it in jars and then I store it in my basement like that and it is perfectly fine. So I'm just going to put the lid on here. That is it. I use old peanut butter jars. I think they're my favorite. It's a good size. You can use canning jars. You can use various sources of things, but that's what I prefer to do is those peanut butter jars there. They're a pain to clean, but you know, it's good in the end. I'm taking my cover off of my other one here one-handedly. Let's look at that. So this is the one that we started last night and we're going to do the same with these and then we'll refill this one. And my daughter has two more canners on. Are those the last two? No, this needs to get canned. So she has the two more canners on. This stuff here has already been canned. She recanned. This is chicken broth that's been recanned because those lids didn't seal this is the beef broth here and then this is 
oops, this is the next batch of what she's going to put in the canners next. It's like 3.30? I think it's around 3.30. Yeah. So that is the plan. We're going to work on that and I'll be back. Hey guys, last day on this um, beef video. I have three more pots over on the wood stove and those are going to be canned down. But it's just going to be exactly the same as what I have behind me here. So I'm just going to show you what we have gotten already. And we have more fat. There's dogs in the other room. Can you hear them? <laughs> the kids are playing dogs. So um, I have two more roasters going with fat and I did do some fat and then I have a whole nother batch of the broth and I'll show you what I got for broth. So this is what I got for broth for, so each one of these rows is six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 60 ish because some of those on the end were chicken broth there and then we'll do a whole nother batch of that which will be about 120 quarts and that will do us for the year so then we're going to come over here to my roaster and then i have this so far for tallow so these are the sweet tallows um, this would be for cooking and I make sure that I specify sweet tallow on top and then the rest of the tallows here usually for this what I would use this for would be for um, bath products and we will be we will be working on all that stuff next um, I will try to take you along with me um, throughout that process this is the time of year that I start thinking about making our soap for the year our supplies dwindle down we also I will think about things like if I'm, if I need to make candles I'll do that I also make like my salves and stuff for the year this time of year I already have some of my oils soaking I uh, videoed some of the beginning of that so that you guys will be able to be part of all of that so that will be coming up soon. We're working on butchering as well. So it's the time of season that we do all those little things. So that was it for the tallow video.